surfing by the San Francisco Bay. The ocean liner's gone so far away. Didn't mean to treat her so bad. She was the best girl I ever had. She said goodbye, I could take her cry. I wanna lay down and die. I ain't got a nickel and I ain't got a lousy dime. She'll come back, think I'm gonna lose my mind If she ever comes back to stay It's gonna be another brand new day Walking with my baby down by the San Francisco Bay Walking with my baby down by the San Francisco Bay In this lesson, we're gonna look at a really fun song. San Francisco Bay Blues. Now, most of you probably know it from Eric Clapton's recording, but this has been recorded by dozens, if not hundreds, of people. The song goes back to the 50s, written by a local guy from my area, although, again, we're talking a long time ago. Jesse Fuller was a uh, local folk star. Local, he actually had settled in Oakland, California, and wrote a lot of songs that were covered by a lot of popular groups at the time. Peter, Paul, and Mary did some of his songs, especially the Bay Area rock groups like uh, Grateful Dead, Jefferson Airplane, uh, people, Hot Tuna. So he was, he was a big influence on these guys, and they just, they just loved his songs. Now this one is catchy. Paul McCartney even did this, I think, on, uh, on one of his albums. So the, uh, Jesse was really interesting. There's a YouTube video that you can see of him playing because he was a one-man band. He strummed the guitar, did some finger picking, and had a, an instrument that he created called a fotdilla. His wife gave it the name because it was something you play with your foot and it was a killer diller accompaniment machine. So the fotdilla uh, was this instrument, so you gotta see this in the video because it's really cool. It basically had bass strings on it that you tune and he would play them with a pedal. So he would be using his right foot to be playing bass notes. Boom, 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 boom. Sometimes they were a little out of tune, couldn't fix them in the middle of the song. That's okay. Then he used his left foot to play something like a hi-hat. So he had boom, tsh, boom, tsh, boom, tsh, boom. All this cool stuff going on while he's strumming the guitar. Now he also had a neck brace, or a neck, not a neck brace, but a, you know, a Bob Dylan type harmonica holder on play the harmonica or the kazoo, as you may have seen in Clapton's video, with the kazoo strapped, strapped into, the, into a neck, neck holder. So yeah, he played in the Bay Area as a one-man band. And um, anyway, it's a sight you gotta see. So he uh, died in the 70s, of, uh, he, and he was in his 70s, as I recall. But uh, again, was a great influence in, in Bay Area music. Now, this song, we're going to talk a little bit about, I have a little theory breakdown where we talk about the chord progression because it's a very standard ragtime blues chord progression in, built in, around a 16 bar format. So we'll go into that in the, in the theory section. But it's, it's called blues, but it's more jug band music. Now, there are also a lot of cool jug bands in California and New York, all over the country, maybe all over the world. I think it was kind of an American thing, though, in the late 50s and early 60s. And now these would be bands that might have a wash tub bass, they might have somebody blowing on a jug, <laughs> which explains the name, Jug Band. Uh, Jim Queskin, Maria Muldar, they were some of the famous, famous bands uh, or performers of, of that style of stuff. So anyway, in this lesson, what we're going to do is just work on keeping a very fast, rhythmic, country kind of strum going and running through the chords. It's not too fancy. You just got to keep belting it out and, and sing the song. And the only thing you're going to have to be able to do to make this work is get to some F chords. We definitely are going to need some full barred Fs in here. And we'll have a few little bass runs connecting some of the chords. We'll talk a little bit about the, the chord progression again just around, around the corner. But it's just a matter of keeping a steady strum going. Get the jug band bass kind of thing happening. There it is. That's what we're looking for. Jesse's feet would be playing this for him, and they'd be a whole octave lower. So, um, let's see. The album, the the album, the easiest place to hear this is from Eric Clapton's Unplugged album. So that's the that's the place I really recommend you listen to it too. And that's probably why most of you have heard it. Who are who are working on who are working on this lesson because uh, there's some some great tunes on that album so be sure to pick that up if you want to hear what 
we can't really call this the original because this goes way back 60 years at this point and uh, or so 50 to 60 but uh, Eric's version of it on his unplugged album is, is kind of the one we're gonna be working at playing in this lesson so so come around the corner for a little talk about theory what the hands are gonna do all the usual stuff I want to talk a little bit about the the theory and form involved in the chord progression of San Francisco Bay Blues because this is a pretty generic type song. There are lots of songs that go like this, Alice's Restaurant, Keep on Truck, and some others. And it follows a very simple square format, meaning if you look at the chart, you can see there are, it's in blocks of four. Four sets of four measures is a half a verse, and the next set of four measures is the second half of the verse. And they're almost the same with just a slightly different ending. We have some really normal chords in the key of C. We got a C chord and a lot of times on the C we want to alternate down to G in the bass. Now you could do one of two, you could either move your third finger back and forth like this or you could play it like with both notes down there. Um, I tend to like moving it because a lot of times we're going to go from one measure of that into a measure of C7 where we're going to have to add your fourth finger there. So our normal fingering for a C chord, but be ready to move your third finger back and forth to the bass. When we go to the Fs, got to play them as a full bar here. You're going to be playing six, the sixth string and the fourth string in the bass, but you still want to have the whole thing down so that when you strum it, you get all those notes because we're, we want to strum as much as possible. Right hand, we're going to be simply doing the basic country pattern. Bass, I'm on a C chord right now. Bass, down, up, alternating to the sixth string, the G in the bass on the C chord, up, down, up. So to break this down a little bit, although you might already have it now, the chart might be all you need. You just strum the chords and you sing the words. So um, let's just talk, talk, talk our way kind of through the the phrasing of the of the chord progression again this is where I really want you to get used to thinking in blocks of four so we've got a four measure progression that is its own like line of stuff and the first four measures are C F C and then C7 and all you really need to do to, so to play that slowly you just gotta get that strum going and again I'm alternating on the C chord back and forth from the fifth to the sixth string alternating down to the G and again I'm moving my finger because Later on, we're going to be doing this with C7s, and I'm going to need to add my fourth finger for the C7. So don't forget, I talked in the, in the left hand close up that you could play the Cs with both of these bass notes, but you still want to hit the fifth string first. So in the first measure, we're going to hit the fifth, alternate down to the sixth, move to an F chord, and really important, the first thing you're going to do here is hit the bass note. So don't worry about getting the whole chord on. This is one of the reasons I really push with bar chords, get the bar on first. Is a perfect example. So when I get that F in the bass, I'm not even going to have the rest of the chord on yet. As I hit that, now I have I have an extra half a beat to get the rest of my fingers down. So you're not you don't want to try to do this. Notice what I did that time. If you could see, it was I went with my fingers first. Maybe late on the bass note. Get the bar on first. <laughs> 